Coronavirus investing, how to build wealth in a crisis. I'm going to explain this to you in three simple, fast steps. Step number one, we have to understand why an investment works. This is going to be the theme of this entire video. We're going to revisit this several times because it's extremely important that I really ingrain this <laughs> into your head. So there's three main metrics that we're looking for when we're analyzing a potential investment or speculation, probability, volume, asymmetry. I've got several videos that take a deep dive on this. We'll put links in the description below. Just brief overview today. As an example of three completely different speculations or investments, first, one of my old favorites, buying and selling trucks. This is kind of an arbitrage play, but also cash flow. This would be a dividend paying stock or a rental property. So why does this strategy work? Because the probability of each transaction working out in your favor is extremely high. Well, let's look at a casino or maybe high frequency trading. Why does this work? Because they just have a slight edge. The probability is much lower, but they have incredible amounts of volume. So they have the law of large numbers on their side. Buying things cheap, selling them expensive. In other words, buy low, sell high. Why does this work? because there's incredible asymmetry in that investment or speculation. Commodities right now, uranium, silver miners would be a good example of that. Where our downside is very low, but our upside is extremely high. I wanna point out another thing here, just as a reminder that we have to consider volatility as well. A lot of people comment and they say, well, George, this isn't really a big deal, maybe the asymmetry, because I'm just gonna put it in a stop loss. But they don't understand if they're getting into an investment, especially a stock, where the volatility is extremely high, this can reduce the probability that you have a winner. Also, it makes the asymmetry much more difficult to calculate. As an example, I've got a chart here of Tesla, believe it or not, this is for one day, <laughs> last Friday. We go from 600 all the way up to 700. Our low of the day was 612. Our high was 689, over a 10% swing in one day. That is extreme volatility. I'm not saying that this is a good or bad investment. That's not what this video is about. I'm just saying that if you're considering buying a stock or anything where the volatility in price is that high, it's going to reduce the probability if you put in a stop loss and it's going to make that asymmetry, the calculation of that much harder. But no video that George Gammon does on investing would be complete without a binomial calculator. <laughs> and before we go to that, to give you another example, I want to remind everyone that our objective here is we want a 95% probability of us making money over the long term with our strategy and the combination of all of our investments in our portfolio. But right now, let's go straight to the binomial calculator. I want to illustrate the point how important it is to think of your entire portfolio, your strategy, and each investment in terms of probabilities. And very, very few people do this. Most people, when they see this type of stuff, they just completely tune it out. If you have an investment where the probability is 75% that you will make money, most people would consider that a very high likelihood and probably a good investment. Let's say your upside was 50%, maybe your downside was 50%. If you execute that investment 10 times, which is probably a lot higher than most people would, keep in mind the more times that we make an investment, the more number of trials that we have, 
the greater probability that it comes out in your favor. But the likelihood that we just break even, and that would be five successes with 10 trials with 50% upside, 50% downside, would be 7.8%. And that's not that high, but it is lower than our goal, or what I think the goal should be, at 95%. So in order to get the probability higher, your probability of success with a single trial, in other words, a single investment, would have to be higher than 75%. So ask yourself, out of all the investments that you have right now in your portfolio, can you honestly say that the probability of success with each one is higher than 75% or you're able to make that investment more than 10 times or there's more asymmetry than just 50-50. Now you may be asking yourself, George, what on earth does a binomial calculator or any of this stuff have to do with the coronavirus or investing, building wealth in a crisis? It has everything to do with it because regardless of why you're investing, when you're investing, or the opportunity that the environment presents, you have to start with these three metrics, probability, volume, asymmetry. Don't worry. Step number three, we're going to get into some coronavirus specific investments that you might be able to take advantage of. Step number two, whenever you're considering buying a stock for whatever reason, whether it's because we're in a crisis situation or not, you've got to remember that you are buying a dry cleaner. Now, what on earth do I mean by that? Let me explain. You are right here and you have worked your tail off your whole life to save $500,000. Or maybe you've sold your house, taken out that equity. Maybe you've got a loan from the bank. The bottom line is you've got a lot riding on this next decision. You're looking for a business to buy and you find that down the street, there's a dry cleaner, we'll call it Dave's Dry Cleaning Service, and that is for sale. This could be the opportunity that you are looking for. When you start to look at Dave's dry cleaning business to determine whether or not you wanna buy it, do you first start by looking at the chart and ask yourself, hmm, what is the 200 day moving average for Dave's dry cleaner? Probably not. Do you consider the fact that Dave's dry cleaning might revolutionize the dry cleaning business? Probably not. Or do you consider buying Dave's dry cleaner because you get a tip from your buddy at the bar or you're watching CNBC and you see Jim Cramer say, bye, 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 Dave's dry cleaning business. Probably not. What you would do is you would ask for their financials. You'd look at a profit and loss statement first and foremost, because you want to see how much money they're actually making because that lets you know if it's number one, going to be a good investment. And number two, if you do have a loan, if you're going to be able to service that loan with the income or the cash that's thrown off by the business itself. You also want to look at the balance sheet, the assets, the debt that it has. And most importantly, you've got to look at the people. You've got to talk to the owners, the management, the employees, and even the vendors. That is key. But all these things don't even come into play when you're considering buying a dry cleaner. So why should they come into play when you're considering buying something like Beyond Meat because it's a hot IPO and considered, by the way, a tech company. That was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Editor, throw that up for the viewers really quick. Or you're looking at maybe a Tesla or an Uber. Whatever it is, you would start by looking at these metrics just like you would 
Dave's Dry Cleaner. To explain this further, I want to go to a very recent interview that I did with Grant Williams from Things That Make You Go Hmm, an amazing newsletter and the co-founder of Real Vision. And we had a chance to discuss someone who is a living legend as far as an investor. His name, Anthony Deaton. And he puts things into perspective and shows us how we need to look at investments in good times and in bad. Editor, let's go right to the interview. There are a few things in this world I like talking about more than Tony Deaton. I mean, he's a, yeah. he's a remarkable man. Um, Tony is someone who, who doesn't really immerse himself in financial markets, but, but he's an investment manager. And he thinks of things in terms of stability, in terms of permanence. Uh, and Tony looks on uh, capital as, as savings. And, and how, should that, how should those savings be deployed? He thinks about things in terms of ownership, in terms of owning a piece of a company. Uh, in terms of owning a piece of cash flow, not just uh, a, an equity that, that is, is inflated by a stock market value. And, and by removing himself from the financial markets, removing himself from the day-to-day -day, uh, marks up and down in, in the swings in financial markets and owning shares in companies that he wants to own for 100 years is, is a very different way of thinking about this. Um, and, and yet it's, it's, it's how markets used to be. It's how people used to become wealthy was either by building a successful business or investing in a business, not buying a share. Uh, and, and Tony tends to buy companies that have principles that match his own, that have uh, goals that match his aims, that have uh, most importantly, perhaps uh, uh, an identical time preference to Tony and, and much of his investing is is an infinite time preference. He wants to buy companies that he can hold for 100 years because he understands how the management thinks. He understands how they build their business and the share prices of no concern to them. Um, they're listed for one reason or another, but their focus is not on the share price. And you know what Tony does and the way he does it with 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 principle and integrity and and ethics. It's it's uh, you know, it's it's a remarkable philosophy that I think stands the test of time and it, and it may have been out of fashion and out of favor, which is why you see so few people like Tony in the world today. But I suspect that philosophy and those principles will once again have their time in the sun. And I suspect that day is probably approaching us uh, fairly, fairly rapidly. So you understand why this is the correct framework for looking at a business, but remember the theme of this video. And that is why it works. Why does looking at a P&L, a balance sheet, looking at the people work better than looking at these three metrics? When we go back to step number one, is it the probabilities? Is it the volume? Is it the asymmetry? The reason this strategy works over the long term is because of those probabilities and a bit of asymmetry. Volume does not come into play here. And I just want to stress that to get you in the mindset of always looking at your own strategy, your own portfolio and investments and always asking yourself this question, why does this work? Why does the math of my portfolio makes sense. <laughs> Step number three, coronavirus specific ideas. And just so you know, guys, this video was demonetized a long time ago. So next video, we'll go right back to the Cerveza sickness. But for right now, we'll just let things fly with the coronavirus. I want to really point out that the valuation of the market is still extremely high. So I don't suggest going in and buying right now, even though we had that huge drop last week. I would suggest setting up a watch list. That's what I'm doing right now. Number one on my watch list is, of course, Coca-Cola. But to illustrate how high the valuation still is, let's go to a tweet from someone that I follow. And if you're on Twitter, I'd suggest following her as well. She's someone that used to work for Stan Druckenmiller, incredibly sharp. 
Her name is Stephanie Pomboy. Let's check out that tweet. After the quote unquote flush last week, the market is still at its second highest valuation in history. The ratio averaged 100% over the last three decades. Getting back to that would require another $8 trillion off of the current market cap. But there are some opportunities that are looking interesting outside of the United States. I was looking at Singapore Air, also kind of a hybrid between the US and China, Las Vegas Sands. Las Vegas Sands is at about a 16 multiple, a little high, but they are paying mid 5% dividend, which is great. Singapore Air is at a 13 multiple, maybe a 3.5% dividend. I want to stress that I'm not buying these now, but I am putting them on my personal watch list and they're a lot closer to me pulling the trigger than anything in the United States. But the very best crisis investing idea I have heard, and I am really, really excited about this one. This is crisis investing at its finest, Doug Casey style right here. And that is ticker symbol C. C L. What is CCL? It's Carnival Cruise Lines. That is the parent company of the Diamond Princess, that big cruise ship that had to quarantine all those people for weeks on end in the news. That's horrible publicity. And as a result, their share price has tanked. But now it's so cheap that it's only trading around a seven P.E. ratio. That is the cheapest thing I have seen in a long time, especially denominated in dollars in the United States. Also, it's paying a 6% dividend yield. That is what I am all about. But I want to really stress the fact that unlike Beyond Meat, Tesla, Uber, these companies just burn money and they have never made an annual profit. Carnival Cruise Lines made $3 billion last year. $3 billion in profit, a 6% dividend yield, trading at a 7 PE ratio. That is crisis investing. That is what you want to look for when the coronavirus really takes hold or if it takes hold in the United States like it did in China. But I want to point out that this wasn't actually my idea. I need to give credit where credit is due. This came from someone who commented on last night's video. So yes, I do try to read as many of those comments as I possibly can. And Liberty Springs was the handle for the person that came up with this fantastic idea. So Liberty Springs, thank you very much. But remember, we've got to ask ourselves why it works. Why does crisis investing, whether it's because of the coronavirus or any other reason, why does it work over the long run? There were some very important metrics that we discussed in step number one. So I'd like to ask you a question. Yes, you the viewer. Why is it that crisis investing works well? Is it because of probabilities? There's a good chance that your investment goes up in price? Or is it because of volume where you've got a slight edge and if you can make that investment or speculation several times, you've got the law of large numbers on your side? Or is it asymmetry that you have very little downside but extreme upside? I'll let you decide. Is it one of those? Is it a combination of several? Let me know what you think in the comments below. For more content that'll help you build wealth and thrive in a world of out of control central banks and big governments, check out this playlist right here and I will see you on the next video.